What's up everybody, Superdux fan here from Mustang with the update number 31 on this Friday. So, if this looks a little weird, that's because it's not the Mustang. I am in the 2015 Dodge Dart press car that I have for the week, because uh, uh, Dodge was so generous as to uh, provide it for me. And um, so yeah, funny story why I'm still in the Dart. So, uh, it's evening here on Thursday. As many of you know, I film these updates on Thursdays and then they go live on Friday. And so uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I got a flat tire on Tuesday. And um, so I uh, have free forward roadside assistance. And so I figured, what the heck, free tow. I'll just have them tow it to the dealership. They can do it there instead of, uh, you know, taking it to a tire shop or something. And there is no spare tire in the Mustang. It's an option. Mine did not come with that option. I have just an air compressor and that's it. So um, I didn't have the option of putting a spare on and driving it to a shop myself. Um, and so uh, I was kind of just stuck, so I said, I'll just have them tow it, they can handle it all, it's all good. So the tow was fine, and they dropped it off at the dealership on Tuesday, and um, they said, uh, well, it, you can't plug the tire because the nail was too close to the sidewall, and so they said it wouldn't be safe if you patched it or plugged it or whatever, so it needed a new tire. So they said, we don't have the tire, the tire will be coming in tomorrow. So. Um, they said it was supposed to be there Wednesday, fine. Did not show up until today, Thursday. Um, and they got the tire in, and then they just let me know a couple of hours ago, hey, your car's ready, the tire's on, everything's good. All right, cool. Drive over to the dealership to get the car, and I'm like, wait a minute, why is the font on the tire different? And tires on the outside and on the inside of you know two different sides of the tire have two different types of font they have the really fancy cool looking graphics on the side that's facing outwards on the side that's facing inwards it looks like a tire from the 1980s and it looked like a tire from the 1980s with that side and i was like wait a minute and then i like looked around the tire and realized it said side facing inwards so they mounted the tire and balanced it and everything with it on the wrong side and um, that's you're not supposed to drive tires because then they spin the wrong way and everything's you know very precise and it's it's not right so you can't just leave it or anything like that it wouldn't be safe I suppose so I uh, you know go back inside to the dealership say I think someone put this tire on wrong and I really don't want to be condescending because I'm sure they're very busy and rushed it might be someone new I don't know but I feel like it's kind of hard to mount and balance a tire the wrong way like on backwards but I it's it is what it is is luckily this is the perfect week for this all to happen because like I said I have this backup car to just drive and that's fine I mean I missed the Mustang but it's not the end of the world so I'm just kind of letting it slide just kind of a minor inconvenience but um so yeah that's what's going on with the Mustang um other thing is I the mod that I talked about last week that's gonna be coming soon has not arrived yet which uh, I don't really mind because I couldn't have put it on anyway because I haven't had the car for the past three days. So uh, that's all good. But on the positive side, I'm getting a really good thorough feel for the Dart because I'm, it's my only car. I've been driving it constantly. Um, but it's uh, it's very good. You can watch the review this upcoming Wednesday of the car. And um, yeah, so uh, that's it for all the updates on everything. But I'll send it back to meet the news desk for this week's news. Right, so for this week's news, the first thing is that... Uh, BMW has been rumored that they're making a faster version of the i8. And while there's been lots of rumors saying it can be almost 600 horsepower, uh, the rumor here uh, that's getting closer to production here is saying that um, it would instead of having the standard turbocharged three-cylinder the current i8 has, that this one would have a 2.0 liter turbocharged four-cylinder that'll do 300 horsepower on its own. And um, so that combined with the electric motors in the i8 would up the power to 450 horsepower, which is a pretty good increase, uh, you know, roughly. 72 horsepower over the current version, uh, which is uh, a make it a good amount faster. They said that they would also focus on keeping the weight the same, even with the extra cylinder. And um, so that's cool. They said it could come pretty soon, as early as next year. So we may see a version of this at Frankfurt, whether it's a concept or the actual production version of whatever they're going to be calling this hotter i8. It probably won't get an M badge, but may uh, be an i8S is what we've been hearing, things like that. So uh, cool to see that. And uh, 
some really exciting mid-engine sports car news. Uh, you remember how Honda was kind of saying how they're going to bring the S660 here to America? That's the K car that is over in Japan, a tiny little roadster that has, you know, all of, I think, 80 horsepower or something like that. Um, and they were going to bring it to America, but they were going to make it wider um, and uh, a little bit bigger. And I think that's what these patent images are showing. People are all just wondering what the heck this is. But it's a finalized patent drawing of some sweet Honda mid-engined vehicle. And it looks like a baby NSX, but it also kind of has some similar styling to the S660, which makes me think this is it. Which And it could mean that this is actually a lot sooner than we originally thought. Um, it, I, originally, I was like, oh, this will be several, several years away. But if they already have a finalized patented design here... This could come pretty quickly. Um, so, I mean, Honda's just on a hot streak with the new Type R and the NSX finally coming out. Um, some good times for Honda here. So, again, there's no information about this car, what it would have in it as far as motors or what it would do um, as far as pricing or anything. I don't. It's hard even with a patent drawing to even kind of see what kind of size it is. It could be just a slightly larger version of the S660, which would make this you know, the size of a BRZ or something, or it could be like a larger, uh, you know, Porsche fighting vehicle, something like that. Who knows? But um, that looks sweet, and that's very exciting to see. I cannot wait to hear more. Speaking of exciting cars, um, probably one of the most exciting cars of all time, the Batmobile, the new one for the Batman vs. Superman movie, officially broke cover. Now, there was a lot of spy images, and we basically saw what it looked like already whenever they were doing the filming, um, but it was officially shown off uh, here in Vegas, and... Uh, looks awesome. Uh, for those of you that hadn't seen it already, it looks so sweet. A really nice blend of the Tumblr and the uh, previous Batmobiles of the 90s and whatnot. And uh, looks very, very cool. And we even get a glimpse of the interior with uh, these new pictures as well. So that's very cool to see. Cannot wait to see that movie. And for some more mundane news, um, very exciting still though, Volkswagen has revealed an updated 2016 Jetta GLI. And um, so the big change for 2016 here is it's going to have the same new engine that the 2015 GTI had. And um, so it's going to have that upgraded engine. You know, it's a 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder. It has 210 horsepower, um, which is uh, a lot of people agree severely underrated that it's actually putting out way more power than that. But, um, so that's uh, great that it has that engine. It also has a slight design tweak, as you can see. Um, they just released two images of the front and the back, different wheels, different front and rear bumpers, uh, a few, you know, new things on the inside. Nothing crazy change-wise, aside from that engine, but a uh, very cool upgrade to see, nonetheless. Back to some BMW news. Um, they officially unveiled the 2016 BMW 7 Series that was teased the past few weeks. And, um... It looks good, you know. I, I was expecting a little bit more. I think it just—it's a very handsome-looking car, though. It does look good and sophisticated. Just doesn't really have much of a wow factor to me, like you get with the Mercedes S-Class. But it looks good, and um, you know, it has some cool technology. I think it has some uh, interesting things, such as uh, swipe gestures with this new iDrive 5.0. That um, there will be pre. Um, selected things that you can do with different gestures with your hands and there's 3D cameras to pick up on those gestures um, which could work horribly or be pretty amazing we'll have to see how that actually works out they're also um, claiming best-in-class rear legroom for this vehicle as well and also it's a, a fairly lightweight uh, vehicle and um, for the 2016 model it's actually 190 pounds lighter than the model it replaces um, and um, so you know it's a uh, it's a very uh, cool vehicle, you know, and um, it'll come with two engines here in America. We have the 740i, um, which is a turbocharged six-cylinder, and then there's going to be the 750i, which has the V8 twin-turbo 4.4 liters. And um, so, yeah, cool to see that. Next is uh, some official news from Cadillac here saying that they confirmed that the new uh, version of the SRX crossover SUV for 2016 that's coming is going to be called the Cadillac XT5. And um, so no other information about it is other than that, aside from the fact that all Cadillac models for 2016 are going to get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, and so that's cool. It is also going to have a faster Q processor. So hopefully some of the complaints about Q go away between the faster processor and the fact that you can have the Apple or Android Android uh, operating system on there um, should hopefully make it more responsive and easier to use. So uh, that's exciting to hear. 
Other GM news is that uh, the Buick crossover, the Encore, uh, their baby crossover, is getting a mild uh, restyling here, it looks, uh, for next year. You know, it looks like it's mostly just on the front end there, some slight tweaks, and uh, just enough to keep it fresh. I think it's still a pretty good selling vehicle, and um, so yeah, cool to see that. Other luxury crossover news is that there's a rumor here that the Lincoln Aviator could make a comeback. Now, the Aviator was a mid-2000s SUV that was based on the Ford Explorer uh, and slotted below the Navigator. And, um, yeah, there's the Navigator now, and they have the MKX, which is kind of like their mid-sized SUV. But uh, they're saying that they could do an Explorer-based Lincoln again and call it the Aviator. And I think that's a spectacular name. I love the Aviator name. And I think that would be a really good idea for the Lincoln to bring that back. Other luxury crossover news is that Hyundai is considering an upscale Genesis based crossover. So the beautifully elegant large Genesis, it's a very impressive car for the money. Um, and, uh, you know, Hyundai, I guess they want to cash in on that success uh, for people that want an SUV version, since SUVs are all the rage now. And I think that would be an excellent idea. They could even, um, you know, obviously it would have to have an SUV shape, but the Genesis uh, interior and everything is so well done, they could just port that over into an SUV. And I think that'd be a home run. Um, so uh, interesting to see that, and hopefully uh, Hyundai does that. Other luxury crossover news, that's all the rage, so that's what everyone's doing. Jeep! Now, I mentioned just last week that Jeep and uh, all of Fiat Chrysler were thinking about pushing some of their plans back in order to bring Alfa Romeo to the estate sooner and all the other Alfa Romeo models. Um, but now it's looking like uh, there's a report here saying that Jeep is going to show off the new Grand Wagoneer, which is going to be their full-size, large, luxury SUV. Um, at dealers this summer. It's going to just be shown to the dealers privately, of course, just, you know, the final design to get the dealers feedback on whether or not they'd actually want this vehicle or whether they think they could sell it. And um, so that's exciting to see. And um, I think the Grand Wagoneer is another great name that needs to be brought back. So I'm excited to see that. Other Chrysler Group news is that uh, they officially priced the 2015 Ram 1500 Rebel. And um, so uh, they said it's officially priced at $43,985. There's a Laramie Limited version that's going to be $51,870. Um, but so that's obviously the kind of Raptor thing that Dodge is doing with the Ram. And that's very cool to see. I think uh, it'll sell pretty well at that price. Another Chrysler Dodge story is that they're... Uh, Introducing a new Mopar 15 performance kit for the Dodge Charger RT, and um, this is they're only doing 50 of these. There, it's a dealer installed upgrade package, basically for 3,500 bucks. That gives you an exhaust and intake, a reflash tune for uh, premium unleaded fuel, and uh, you know it has um, a few other things. It gives you an extra 18 horsepower and 18 pounds-feet of torque. And um, like I said, very exclusive. It has different wheels and stripes, things like that. Uh, but again, they're only making 50 of them, so chances are you and I will probably never even see one. And in motorsports, uh, Aston Martin revealed their Vantage GTE art car that's going to be uh, at Le Mans this year and uh, looks uh, pretty crazy. It's like a 3D kind of deception thing. They said they wanted to make it look like it was moving even when it was standing still with this uh, paint scheme. And uh, all I can say is that looking at it for more than a few seconds makes my eyes hurt. It's like... Uh, that's a weird optical illusion, but that's what they're going for, and that's very cool. And uh, another car that was spied this week uh, with a refresh is Mercedes is uh, refreshing the SLK. Yeah, they still make the SLK. I always forget about that vehicle because it seems like it's been on the market forever without any real changes. Um, and they're finally changing it, I think, with uh, they're going to put the new Mercedes family front end on it. You know, they've been putting on everything, um, and they're probably going to rename it the SLC. So uh, that's uh, interesting to see that, and um, no other word as far as any other changes that it might may have, but uh, the refresh will definitely help, and the new name will be cool, but I'm, I was kind of hoping for an all-new baby Mercedes sports car, but uh, sadly, it looks like it's just going to get a refresh for now. And the last two stories this week are two very exciting stories and some of the best news this week. First is that uh, Porsche, uh, there's a report here that they're planning a back to basics 911, they would just call it the 911 GT. Um, this is a rumor, but uh, this, I've been hearing this from a lot of different places, so this probably is legit. Um, and what this is saying with this report is um, it's going to be coming next year. And at this fall, we're going to be getting all the new Mark II versions of the 991, 911, called the 992s. And those will be coming um, with all turbocharged engines. What they're saying is this 911 GT for 2016 or whatever would, one, be manual transmission only, which is awesome. 
Two, they said it would have skinnier tires and have the skinnier body of the regular Carrera, not the wider body of the Carrera 4S that you know you also see on the GT3 and GT3 RS. This would be the, the skinnier body with skinnier tires so that the car can have more at-limit handling. And basically, they want to make they want to kind of do the BRZ treatment to it, put skinnier tires on it, makes it more tail happy, and just a really pure, awesome driving experience. And you can actually exploit the limits of the car, and the car will have lower limits. So you can have fun with it, which is one of the best ideas Porsche has come up with in a long time, in my opinion. So that is awesome. The cherry on top is that they said that it's a, there's a good chance that this new 911 GT could be the only 911 for this new generation to have a naturally aspirated engine. They would just port over the old engine with the regular old manual transmission and skinny tires and a skinny body. And for some reason, that sounds like the best 911 in the range to me. I don't know why. I mean, of course, the GT3 and the GT3 RS and the turbos and all those are all very, very sick cars. But for, that sounds like a recipe for the most fun 911 ever. And that is very exciting. So hopefully that's all true and it comes very soon because uh, that is going to be amazing. And the last story is the CEO of Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, uh, the guy that runs it all, he said that it's not a matter of if, but when they bring back the Dino brand. And the Dinos, if you don't know your Ferrari history back in the 70s, Dino uh, was a baby Ferrari named after uh, Enzo Ferrari's son that sadly passed away, named Dino. And so that's what these were. These were V6 uh, or six cylinder powered uh, vehicles that looked very cool. Um, obviously, not as high performing as a Ferrari, but had a really great shape and were still very fun cars to drive. And um, so what they're saying is that the Dino brand could come back as a standalone brand. It wouldn't just be a cheap Ferrari because they're saying they do not want to cheapen the Ferrari brand. They said they won't do it, you know, to sell an extra 500 vehicles or something. They're, they want to do this right and they want to, you know, make sure that it, it, it honors its legacy while still, you know, obviously maintaining, um, you know, Ferrari's exclusivity. And so um, they said th these cars could actually have around 500 horsepower. They said they could be V6 powered though. And they, you know, it's the same motors they're working, they've been uh, working on for the Alfa Romeos and the Maseratis that have these V6 engines, probably turbocharged, we would assume here, and um, could make for some great cars. And they said that it, it could be something that's like a 911 fighter. But what we could be looking at is something that's more like a McLaren 570S competitor that's, you know, under 200,000 um, bucks, you know, still very high performing, not crazy balls to the wall like the Ferrari 48 GTB, but still a very fun and very exotic looking vehicle. So, um, again, he, it says it's going to happen, it's just they don't know when. So this could be five years from now, ten years from now, two years from now, I don't know. But uh, it's coming eventually, and whenever it does, that's going to be a really big deal. So that's exciting to see. So anyway, that's it for all the news this week, guys. So us back to me in the car. So at this point in the video, normally I would do an acceleration to leave you guys with, uh, but this car is in super fast, and I'll leave the acceleration reactions for the actual review video. So I'll just say thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe, of course. Uh, you know, obviously I always post new videos every Wednesday and Friday. So definitely, you know, subscribe, stay tuned for all that stuff. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Take care.